Welcome back, everyone. Did you know a woman invented the circular saw, liquid paper, windshield wipers? The list goes on and on, but only 5.5% of U.S. patent holders are women. In fact, women couldn't even own a patent until the late 19th century. Nonetheless, some were bold enough to secure a patent as far back as 1809. Ida Bird Hill is the founder of Uplift Inc. and she joins us now to talk about that and women inventors. Good to have you here, Ida. Glad to be here. Thank you. What is Uplift Inc. all about? We are a nonprofit idea incubator. Uh, we create ideas to reinvent cities. Right oh. now I'm in Detroit. Uh -huh. You hear so much negativity about Detroit. Yes. But there's a lot of good things going on and a lot of inventions that are happening in our technology corridor and we've been sponsoring a few of those. Well, let's talk about women. Why do we have so few patents out there? First of all, because we don't really go into a lot of the scientific areas mm -hmm. where a lot of that research happens. And people don't realize that a lot of times that starts in middle school or early ele elementary mm -hmm. because sciences, technology, engineering, even art is cumulative. Mm -hmm. mathematics and so if you don't get your kids started in fourth and fifth grade by the time they get to high school they're kind of missing some things right and so they've kind of closed off themselves to a lot of the world well let's talk about women who've made a difference and, and not not how everyday household names there was a Native American woman inventor named Kokochi? Yes. Kokochi? Yeah, you did got she, it right. Now, now <laughs> the, what did she invent? Herbal medicine. Oh. You know, people don't realize that when you first come to this country, you know, you have illnesses. Mm -hmm. Illnesses you don't know anything about, but the Native Americans were here, and they had created natural medication in order to solve a lot of those problems. We just saw her headstone, Kokochi. Okay, mm -hmm. and that was in 1769? 1769. Good golly. Yeah. Okay, now there was a, a European-American patent holder named Mary Dixon Kies. Kies. And tell us about her. Straw hats. Huh. We owe all of the straw hats to her invention because she has an actual patent of having the weaving of straw with silk in order to create a hat. Because straw by itself is not really malleable to put into anything, mm -hmm. but by putting threads of silk in it, you're able to create a hat of any shape, size, or form. And while we don't think that that's a major invention, we still wear hats, we so sure that patent has been around for a long time. And she it's did that in 1809? 1809. But apparently you had to get a male to get the patent for you back then? Right, but she was able to get her own patent. Good for her. So un unlike, you know, in most places you had to have an actual father, brother, or mm -hmm. husband, she fought to get her own patent, and it stands in her name to this day. Way to go, Mary. All right, mm -hmm. now we've got uh, an African-American woman patent holder, Sarah E. Good. Yes. What did she invent? A folding cabinet bed, which is similar to a Murphy bed, uh -huh. but just in a smaller version of, of a cabinet. Good for her. And so, and that patent still stands around. She got that in her name as well. Really? So would yeah. her family benefit from that? Yes and no. Um, one of the things that, you know, that we find is that even though people hold patents, oftentimes they don't understand the commercialization. You have to, holding a patent does not make the money by itself. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to sell it, either sell it to another company who's going to sell it, or you create a company around it to sell it. Right. Which is big business. Yeah, which definitely. Is big business. Uh, let's talk about Ellen Ochoa. Um, optical inspection system? Yes, and that's a new patent, 19, 1987. And incidentally, she's a director of NASA. Oh. She was the first Hispanic astronaut ever. Um, and she created in this optical system. Actually, there are three patents that go with that one patent so that you can see different things in the inspection system on a space shuttle. Good for her. So that's a really big deal because it's a very high technical issue. But you see, she's also the director of yeah. NASA as Smart well. Cookie. Smart now, let's cookie. talk about Fluke because you really want to encourage young people to invent. I do. And I, I really want to encourage not only young people to invent, but really girls, because mm -hmm. we really don't push our girls into the sciences. We don't even push them into the arts, even though we want them to be artsy. Right. Because right now we're in a new economy where science and art have converged upon each other. And when you don't really push your daughters into that area, you have closed off 80% of the careers of today's world and tomorrow's world. Right. So what we did is we created this board game called Fluke, the wealth building game of accidental inventions. Mm -hmm. And it talks about corporate America and why you need to invent and why it's so important to get a patent. Because I think that when people don't know why they, they need to do something, they don't have an interest in it. Right. Okay. Well, the board game again is Fluke. Ida Bird Hill, founder of Uplift Inc. Way to go. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more daytime.